Coke or Pepsi? Which is the better drink? It's a question that has never been answered. But an emerging field known as consumer neuroscience may be able to shed light on this never-ending debate. To explain how consumer neuroscience can help answer the Coke versus Pepsi debate, we turn to a paper by McClure et al. from the Department of Neuroscience at the Baylor College of Medicine. Their paper is entitled, Neural Correlates of Behavioral Preference for Culturally Familiar Drinks. Coke and Pepsi are two of the most iconic brands in America today, and there is a very intense subjective battle over which is the better soft drink. This is interesting because they're virtually identical drinks with nearly the same chemical composition. There's no doubt, however, that most people have very strong preferences of one brand over the other. This raises the question of why people make the choices that they make. We have two virtually identical drinks and yet very different responses. So the question that we want to ask is how cultural messages such as branding affect our perceptions and alter our behaviors. The objective of this study was to discover whether or not the brain acts differently in different branding situations. The study was composed of three separate tests designed to represent branding in different ways. The first test was a stated preference test. The subjects were asked to state whether they preferred Pepsi or Coke. The second test was an anonymous taste test where the subjects were given two unknown samples of cola and were asked to determine which tasted the best to them. They were always given both Pepsi and Coke, but the subjects never knew which order they received them. The third test was a brand cued taste test. This time, one sample was labeled with the appropriate brand and the second sample was unlabeled. The subjects were told that the second sample could contain either Pepsi or Coke. For both the second and the third test, fMRI scanning was used to scan the brains of the subjects to see if there's a difference in the brain activation between these two testing phases. The results of the first test show that there's no difference in stated preference among the participants, as nearly an equal number chose Pepsi versus Coke. Moving on to the results of the anonymous taste test. The testers chose to repeat their taste test three times just to confirm their results. This would allow for individuals to make a selection of Coke for a maximum of three times. The figure in the upper left shows the number of selections of Coke for each individual. There's a maximum of three, a minimum of zero, and 15 total corresponding to the number of participants. I really hate this figure though because it doesn't allow you to comprehend the number of overall Coke selections versus the number of overall Pepsi selections. I'll add those numbers in for you now you can see that there were 22 Coke selections and 23 Pepsi selections. Again, corresponding to the previous stated preference, there's almost no difference between those that prefer Coke over those that prefer Pepsi. The fMRI scan for the anonymous taste test showed an increased activation in the ventromedial prefrontal cortex when subjects drank both Pepsi and Coke, and this activation was virtually identical for both beverages. It really gets interesting when we look into the brand cued taste test. We have the same type of figure here as we did previously where the figure counts the number of times each participant chose the respective brand. There's a maximum of three and a minimum of zero. When we examine Pepsi, we see that the number of selections remains relatively constant. But when we look at Coke, we can see most of the participants ended up choosing Coke two and three times there's clearly a difference here between Pepsi and Coke. The final figure compares the anonymous taste test with the brand taste test. Depicted here is the average count for the number of selections of Coke tasting better than Pepsi. The labeled Pepsi test did not produce significantly different results compared to the anonymous taste test, but the labeled Coke test produced significantly larger average counts of Coke tasting better than Pepsi. This means that knowing you're drinking Coke is rewarding beyond simply the taste itself. When we look at the fMRI scan for the Coke test and the Pepsi test, there's a striking difference between the two. The Coke test produced increased activation in several brain areas, including the bilateral hippocampus and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. The Pepsi test, on the other hand, did not produce significantly increased activation in any areas of the brain. 
So with these results, we have to ask ourselves, what exactly does all of this mean? The basic conclusion is that there's two separate areas of the brain that help us to determine what soft drink preference we have. The first area is the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, and the second area includes the hippocampus, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and the midbrain. The fact that two separate areas of the brain were activated during two different testing phases suggests that there are at least two separate components to deciding which soft drink preference you have. The ventromedial prefrontal cortex was activated during the anonymous taste testing phase. The only, the only input the subjects had here was the sensory input of taste. It appears then that this area of the brain is responsible for choices based strictly on sensory information. Uh, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex has been shown to be part of the reward system, so it appears that what is going on here is the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is helping the subjects to decide which taste is more rewarding. This is contrasted with the areas of the brain activated during the brand cued taste test. During this test, the subjects had more than simply sensory information to rely on. They knew one of the brands that they were drinking. The hippocampus and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex have both been previously established as contributing to memory and recollection. It appears these brain structures are helping the subjects recall previous associations they have with cultural information and cultural expectations. In this case, prior associations with the Coke brand and the Pepsi brand. This information then serves to alter their perceptions and modify their behavior to act in accordance with these prior cultural values. Therefore, when the subjects decide which drink tastes the best to them, they not only have sensory information to rely on, but all of this previous cultural information as well. From this, we can conclude that there's a difference between the impact of the Coke brand and the Pepsi brand on the consumer. The Pepsi brand does not activate the hippocampus or the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and therefore does not significantly alter the results of the anonymous taste test. The Coke brand, however, produces increased activation in these brain structures and significantly increased the number of subjects that believed Coke tasted better than Pepsi. The anonymous taste test suggests that the two sodas are very equally matched, but it's clear that the Coke brand has a much more substantial impact on the consumer than does the Pepsi brand. After this long, never-ending debate, it appears that science has finally been able to answer the question of Coke versus Pepsi. Thanks to the hippocampus and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, it appears that the answer, at least for now, is undeniably Coke.